Hello, I'm Phil Svitak, 360 Creative Coach. And in this episode, I want to tackle the notion of privilege. But I want to do it from a different kind of angle. And it's based off of something that Emmanuel Acho said. Now, for those unfamiliar, Emmanuel Acho is a former linebacker in the NFL. He's now a sports anchor for Fox. And he recently came out with a book called Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man, which is you know, talking about racism in America and so forth. Now, obviously, you know, the, the, the notion that he's tackling is racism and, and white pr privilege and things like that. But I'm going to kind of expand this a little bit uh, more so because th there's pr privilege in all forms. And, you know, I think part, part, before I can even really get into it, I think just to ground everyone, privilege does not mean, you know, whether it's white privilege or anything else, does not mean that your life was not hard. But it means in, you know, just taking white privilege, it does not mean that your life has ever been hard because of the color of your skin. Okay, so that, that's, that's the notion, okay? And you can take this, you know, extract it to other things. And in fact, you know, the notion that I really want to talk about that, that Emmanuel really cemented for me is use your privilege for good. You don't have to feel guilty about your privilege, right? There's nothing, guilt does no one good, whether you or anyone else. So how are you going to use your privilege for good? You know, one of the things that he talks about, uh, albeit he is a black man, but, you know, he's a celebrity. And so he has, uh, as, you know, he terms it like fame privilege. So, you know, his fame has afforded him things. And so he, as he talks about, he doesn't go around uh, saying like, oh, someone recognized me on the streets again today. Oh, man. And now he's feeling guilty. It's like, no, you know, he is a he is someone of fame. And so he is going to be recognized and so forth. And because of that, it also affords him uh, access and things. So for example, he is partner, you know, he has like a partnership, uh, sponsorship, whatever you want to call it, with a restaurant where, uh, you know, one of the things that he gets is once a year, he can throw a party for 100 people. And so what he chooses to do, rather than just like selfish, selfishly throw a party for him and his friends, he chooses to utilize that to throw a party for, for people who are hungry, you know, who, who don't get to eat and so forth. And that's a way, that's one example to utilize his privilege. And so that's something that I want you to really think about is, A, I mean, it starts with like un understanding your pri privilege and things like that. And again, it comes in various forms. But, but so really go down the list of what is my privilege, right? AKA your privilege. And so for me, I have white privilege. I have male privilege. Um, you know, and I, you know, these are just a, a few, right? And so in that sense, how can I use my privilege um, for good, right? I have, you know, part of my privilege, I'm not famous, but I do know people and I can, I have uh, people that I can mo mobilize in various ways. And so I can, Utilize that to, to create an impact, right? You know, it's one of the reasons why I choose to talk about these things in these episodes rather than just purely, you know, creative how-tos um, because I think, you know, one of the reasons I call myself a 360 creative coach is because we can't just separate our artistic life from life in general. And so this is part of it. And so as artists, we can be afforded a certain privilege, you know, like our, we have perhaps an audience and however large or small, but, um, you know, the people that like our art, uh, one would hope that, you know, that they truly appreciate it. And therefore we have the ability to impact their lives and, and, and kind of sway them towards, um, something better. Right. And so in that sense, I try to utilize my platform in this way, uh, because I recognize it as a privilege to be able to, you know, turn on a camera and post videos and spread, uh, you know, this type of message and, and get, get you and other people perhaps to think about this and, you know, hopefully change it. Now, I'm not so arrogant to think like, oh, my voice alone is the thing that's going to like change. But, but it, it, that cliche thing, if it just changes one person, then it was worth it. 
And so that's, to me, a form of utilizing my privilege. You know, uh, the other kind of form of it is, like, I was really kind of considering this, you know, and I was talking with one of my friends about this. Like, it could be very easy for me to just shut myself off and, let's say, write books. Not saying that writing a book is an easy task, but, you know, it's it requires less faith in other people, let's say, versus a movie, you know. And so I've been working towards making my second feature film. And, you know, the fact of the matter is I can't do it alone. I need the help of other people. Excuse me. And so in that regard, in order, you know, one of the things that I look at as a filmmaker, both in terms of story and how I kind of go about it is, you know, I want to shine the light on my various friends who I think are very talented but, you know, sadly, Marvel or Disney or whoever is not knocking on their door um, to cast them in movies yet. And so it's like, well, let me knock, let me be the one to knock on their doors because, you know, I, I, I know one of, one of the things that I'm afforded is if, if I know nothing else, it's how to make a movie um, for cheap and get it done. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be necessarily the best movie. But if nothing else, you know, like with my first movie, the, the whole might not be 100% great. Um, that's for other people to judge, not me. I think it's a great movie, but again, that's beside the point. But I know that at least they will have a representation. They could take uh, uh, at least a scene or two and put it on their reel and be proud of what they've done, right? And so for me, I try to uh, give that to people in, you know, as because that is you know, my talent, therefore a privilege. And also part of that is, you know, can I cast more women in my roles. Can I, you know, for example, the movie that I want to make is very, you know, kind of tied to the tech world. Well, it's like, you know, why don't I, ta why don't I cast people that are not naturally seen as in the tech world? You know, um, the tech world tends to be very male dominated um, and so forth. And so it's like, well, can I diversify that? You know, and I'm not going to draw attention to it. I'm just going to cast a diverse range of people for the role of coders and engineers and so forth. And it's like, okay, cool. You know, or even even just as simple as, you know, a really smart teacher, instead of having it be a white male teacher, what if it was a, a black woman or a black man or a, a Native, Native American uh, woman, right? Just, just all these different ways and, and so forth. So this is kind of how I think about utilizing my privilege and so forth. Um, to, to try to create a more positive impact in the world because part of it is, you know, just to continue down this thread of filmmaking for me, you know, I, we, by, by, by people, audiences seeing diversity on screen, it normalizes it, right? And in all the ways, you know, if people don't see themselves represented, then they're never going to get the idea of like, oh, I can do this, right? And so that's one of the ways I feel like I can help. Um, and as a, you know, there's plenty of other ways I can help, you know, um, just even down to like, I'm lucky enough, um, that during this pandemic I am and have been able to work and continue work and not really worry about, you know, um, making rent and so forth. And so I really recognize that as a privilege. And so it's like, okay, how can I utilize that? Well, you know, if there's friends, um, who are struggling, you know, can I make them food? Um, you know, can I, can I be of benefit in some small way? And, you know, I've given money to my friends, um, you know, no questions asked and I'm not even asking for it back. You know, am I a rich person? By no means, you know, like, and I think that's something kind of, we, we also forget. It's like, you know, uh, I think you may kind of have seen this somewhere, but like, it's, it, it's, it's one of the ideas where, you know, you take a billionaire and they give someone, you know, $2,000. It's like, oh, this person's so generous. It's like, yeah, but um, is that really generous? Or um, let's say the person that, that has only 20 bucks and they give you 20 bucks. Who's really more generous? Well, the per person that gave, you know, the 20 bucks because they, in spite of everything that they had, they still gave it away. And oftentimes I do, you know, it's, I think it rings true overall, at least from what I've seen. The people that sometimes have the least to give are always the most willing to give. 
And I think we need to normalize that in order. And, and I think how we get to a place where people with more are able to, you know, do in fact give more is through practice and habit. You're never going to give even when you have a lot is if you're not in practice with it. And so using your pr privilege for good, this, this is, you know, that can be an exercise of it. And I'm not saying you have to give money and things like that. Um, there's plenty, like the good news is there's plenty of ways to help. And there's really no wrong way to help except through inaction, I believe. Okay. And, you know, whether it's, uh, you, know, you know, if you have the ability of time, you know, if that's your privilege, donate your time. You know, um, whatever small thing you can do um, to help the world is a worthwhile pursuit and worth doing. And like I said, it, it, the how and the what is less important than the why. I really believe that. You know, I think too many people, how can I help? How can I help? There's 800 ways to help. So really think about your privilege and how can you utilize your privilege for good? And make a small impact, you know. One small impact affects can, can be can be really wonderful. You know, it can start a domino effect. But in, inaction is the only wrong form of helping. I really believe that. So that's what I have for you today. Um, you know, think about this, sit with it, and really explore it, unpack it, and all that stuff, and, and then do some do some good. Um, thank you. If you have any questions or thoughts of your own, by all means, please share, whether down in the comment section or hit me up on social media at Phil Svitek. I certainly would appreciate it. Furthermore, if you think this message would be of worthwhile for someone else to hear in your life, by all means, please share it with them. I certainly would appreciate it. It would mean a lot to me. And uh, I appreciate you. I'll see you next time. <laughs>